What's up everybody? Welcome back to another exciting Apex Legends video. Today I'm going to give you my Apex Predator ALC settings for Apex Legends Season 8. Let's do it. Let's go, baby. All right, guys, welcome back to another Apex Legends video. Today, I'm going to give you my ALC settings, my Apex Predator ALC settings that I've been using for a long time now. Uh, now, although this is a settings video and you guys have probably seen, you know, countless setting videos in the past for Apex, including my own, which I love updating you guys on to show you how much things change. I'm just not going to go over everything that's in here. If you guys do want to know my gameplay and just the normal controller stuff that happens inside Apex Legends, uh, the settings for me, then check out the video. The link will be above. But this, we're just going to get into the bread and butter. Uh, I'll just skim through um, just this, and then we'll get into the bread and butter of the ALC settings. So I've been using ALC settings for a long time now. Um, and then I've also been using the normal settings, which you can see right here is 6.4 for me or 5.4 for me. So with a classic respawn and then the look dead zone of a small. So these haven't changed since my last video. So I just want to go over the advanced look controls because this is a little bit more in depth. You're going to have more control over everything that you have as far as your aim, your movement, etc. inside Apex Legends. So let's, let's just break this down. Okay, so you just turn this on. Now, if you guys just look to the right, there's a brief explanation of everything that these mean. But if you guys want some clarity, I'm going to go over the ones that I'm currently using. And the other ones that we leave out, we just leave out. Okay, so dead zone is the size of the inner range in which the stick input will not be registered. So smaller is generally better. You know, it allows for a finer control. So the default is up here. But the lower the dead zone, the easier and more control you have over your thumbstick. Okay. Although we do use thumbsticks and like we only have our thumbs, we don't have an arm like PC. This is going to give you the best amount of control that you can have on your aim. So I used to have this at none, but I have this one tick up from the bottom. This is just a very, very good, comfortable dead zone for me. You know, this allows me to control my aim as you guys just saw. It controls my aim really, really well with the R99 and like the flat line and other guns that have high recoil. So having a dead zone a lot smaller than normal like if we put this up and then we come back out here and we try to aim like my stick is just going to move a little bit more than it normally would and that's just because i don't have as much control you're kind of letting the the stick do more of it than just your thumb but look at that i mean it's just the dead zone you just have more control over your stick when you're applying the pressure so out of threshold this is just the boundary of the max stick input that your thumb would need to go. The default is only one up. I just turn this as low as it can possibly go, and that just works. You can use this on the default, which is just fine, So, but I just leave this on one. Now, the response curve, this is the magnitude remapping applied to your stick input. It's how sensitive the stick is across the, the range of your input. So lower values can feel too twitchy, and higher values can feel too dull. So the default is roughly around like a three sensitivity if you're going to play with normal you know like a normal response curve if you were to play like with the alc settings turned off so i have mine one two three above i believe yeah i had it three above or no i have it yeah three above the response curve this just allows me to to have it just like feel really good when i'm moving because as you can see my stick kind of pulls a little bit but this is just allows you to have really good control over here. And it puts me at about like a, a four or a five look sensitivity that would be on default, which is really good for me. It makes me feel like I can really just, you know, I can snap onto people really well. So 
and then I can just move over and snap. You know what I mean? So this is roughly where where you want it. Now, if you play a little bit higher than you get into the higher sensitivities, now this is all personal preference, guys. But I'm going to share mine because like this just really works for me. The higher that you have it, you know the you know it's just going to feel like you can't move. If I put this all the way up, right, it just feels really dull. Like I just don't have a whole lot of control. And then if I turn it down, right, it just my response curve is just like it's just so twitchy i just feel like i i'm playing on linear and at that point you might as well look like i can't even aim because it's just too just too twitchy too twitchy so i want this at like a three above this gives me a really good response curve for controlling my aim and movement in apex proactic settings i just leave these all um you know 1.2 1.4 2.0 3.0 3.0 3.0 .3 i never use these big sites guys so i don't know if you guys use them but i never do the four time octic i rarely do if i'm using the two by four then that goes up but one by two one one by four just as this allows me to keep up with people moving fast and in, inside apex Legends. so i leave that on now the yaw speed and pitch speed guys this is how quickly you turn left or right or go up and down okay now for overall this is my pitch speed going up is a lot less than my pitch speed going left and right because the reason i want this is i want my pitch speed up and down to be a lot lower so i can track people easier easier when i'm hip firing and i want the yaw speed higher so then that way i can turn left or right to be able to snap and just look around and have really good movement inside apex so this is one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen 17 before the tick 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 40 50 60 17 so this just gives me a really good like left to right look at that my left to right is really good it's about equal to that like five or six so it allows me just to have really good movement when i'm moving around and then the up and down is equivalent to like a three or four so when i am tracking on here right and i'm just hip firing i can have really good control because not not a lot of players jump and when they do jump you can just easily track up and down you don't need this to be very fast but you do want your left and right so when you are like you're hip firing and you, you need to reload then i can just you know i can move around and get away you want to be able to do that but the main reason that these values are this way is because i want to be able to hip fire and track as best that i can as best that i can and then my pitch speed is one two three four five six uh, from the start point one two three four five six now you can play around with these it all depends on how you want if you want to be able to just you know look like you're you're using a mouse on your alc settings or on console then you could turn these all the way up and it's going to help you just look like you're cracked out of your mind and hey shout out to you man if you can play on the higher sensitivities and and just you know destroy lobbies and destroy teams then hey man props to you do your thing me, I like these uh, values just so, you know, at, at 17 and then 6 just so I can have really good left to right aim when I'm moving around. So if I have to dodge, you know, and I'm just trying to dodge bullets or I need to move and, like, lock onto other teams. And then for my hit fire, I want to be able to just attract really, really well. So those are the values that I have on that. Now, the, the turning extra yaw, this just allows you when your stick and put is at maximum, how much more quickly you turn left or right. And allows you to turn around with more finer control. So what this does is... It allows me when I'm like going this way, I can just spin and then like lock on. So if I'm running and I need to spin and then lock on to somebody, I can do that and just whip around, right? This is about equal to the setting. Now, if I turn this off, then the setting is going to be a little bit different. It just won't allow me to turn with such fine control or it won't be as smooth. It's going to be a little bit rough. So like, let's see if we turn this all the way down and just take this off, right? Like see how much slower and like, I just don't feel like I have the movement here it's a little bit it's very very limited so i can't necessarily just whip on somebody like and then look at that that's that's me slide jumping and trying to do a 180 just to turn on somebody i do that a lot when i'm running so if i jump and turn around look how much slower that is but then if i turn my yaw speed all the way up right and then i slide jump like look how much faster i can just turn on somebody so i want to be able to move very quickly and make really fine adjustments in my game without too much you know disrupting or having to take a long time to do that the extra things ramp up ramp up delay and extra pitch we don't use any of these guys there's no reason to so turn those all the way off now ads yaw speed pitch speed guys this is how fast and how quickly you're going to move left to right and up and down um 
So when you are aiming one, two, three, and then one, two, uh, I have this one, two, three. Yeah, one, two, three. Three on the ADS shot speed and pitch speed is uh, two above. This just gives me a really good sense of control when I'm aiming. Th what this means is that I'm roughly at like a three or a four on normal settings, which for you may not be that good, but for me, it just works really, really well. It's just a personal preference thing. It's just going to allow me to aim and control the stick very well. Now, the, the ADS yaw speed on here, if I use the 301, it controls the left to right a lot better. So when I'm aiming, I don't have a lot of left to right uh, recoil on the gun. I mean, you can see the R3 is just a really balanced gun, and there's not a lot of left to right. But if we go to the flatline, which has a lot of left to right on the stick, right? See, it's very manageable and easier to control when I have that up to about three. I can still keep all hit my target every single time now if you turn this up more you're going to be more cracked like you're on a mouse and then if you turn it down more you're going to be down to like a default three or two on normal settings which is not going to be as easy so if we turn this down right if we just turn this down and i'm trying to aim look how slow it is for me to move it's going to make tracking almost impossible and then if we turn this up right if we just like turn this like just get a good like turn this up a lot now look now my stick is just all over the place it's just too cracked for me so I keep this around three on the yaw speed, one, two, three, and then two on the pitch speed, one, two. This gives me a really nice, smooth feeling to be able to track, go up and down, and then just keep, you know, me being on, on, on target the entire time without anybody trying to get away from me. So and it, it allows me to keep recoil very manageable. So that's why I use those two. And then everything else here, guys, is all turned off. You don't need any of this. If you do want, if you feel like you're 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 struggling on tracking, but you don't want to increase these, then you could turn the ADS extra y'all. What this allows you to do is when you're ADSing, it allows you to move a lot faster, left and right and up and down. So if you're if you're having trouble tracking, then you can definitely do that. But you should definitely use these little targets to, to increase your tracking, guys. But left and right, it just allows you to have a little bit more control with that if you are struggling with tracking. For me, I did use this like, you know, one or two up or just on the, the normal bar. But I turn it off because the normal ADS settings allow you to just be able to track targets very, very well and, and, and really easy. So it's not, it's not too bad when you're doing that. But again, guys, everything is off. And then, of course, with ALC... This right here, target compensation, guys, uh, and melee target compensation. This is your aim assist. If you're on controller and you're using these settings, turn these on. Okay, don't be a, duh, you know, a ditto. Don't be one of these. Turn these on. You need these. But if you want, copy the settings. Let me know how, how you like them down in the comments. But that is going to be it for today's video, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really do hope that these, uh, you know, Apex Predator... ALC settings really do help you out. I've been loving them for a while and I've been playing playing with them for a season now, you know, ever since season seven. So we're into season eight and the settings have just been a complete laser beam for me, especially on the more high real cool guns like the Flatline and the Spitfire, which has become absolute meta right now. So, I mean, look at that. The gun is just not moving. It's just so such smooth control. I can really aim and just do whatever I want with these settings. So I really do hope that these uh, settings have helped you out, guys. If you guys did enjoy today's video, make sure to drop a like. And if you're new here, be sure to subscribe for more Apex Legends tips videos. And for me, Warlug, as always, guys, stay gaming, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.